Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Mercenary Thoughts from the Inner Sphere, episode 185. I'm Hilk Rex, and today we're going to be talking about the Vapor Eagle, or aka Gosshawk, however you want to look at it from what side of the aisle. It's a 55-ton clan mech, second-line mech, basically from the Steel Vipers, or whoever else may have gotten their hands on one of these things. All right, let's just delve into this thing. Well, the Gosshawk Vapor Eagle is 55 tons. It's a 696, so it's a very agile little mech for its class. Falls in the same category as the Ryokin. Yeah. Yep, one of those favorite mechs of mine. It has Indo Steel and Ferrofibrous Armor, so it has all the bells and whistles, so this could be a Omni Mech, but it's not. It's not an Omni Mech, really. It's just a set piece mech. It has 11 heat sinks, for double heat sinks, that is, so it can dissipate 22 heat. It has 182 points of armor, which is slightly less than you would see normally. And, well, I think it's 185, I think, is maxed out on this thing. So, it really, it is close to being maxed out. It has four weapon systems. It has, in the right arm, a large pulse laser. Okay, can't deny that being a nice little weapon system. It has a medium pulse laser in the left torso, an SRM-6 or SRM-2 streak in the left torso with a ton of ammo. And, obviously, it has case in both torsos. It has a medium pulse laser in the right torso, another medium pulse laser in the right torso, and a targeting computer. Well, pulse lasers and a targeting computer. Who doesn't like that? And then it also has an SRM6 streak in the right torso. Then in the left arm, it has three machine guns with a half ton of ammo. And case in the torso, that left arm. And obviously it has six jump jets, two in each leg, and one in each torso, right and left torso. Alright, so it has a good assessment, assessment, or set of weapons. Oh, man, can't even talk today. Uh, weapon systems that can be used for multiple targets. Basically though, let's just look at it. This thing can shoot at 20 with the large pulse laser with a minus 3. So if it runs, heck, it is having only a minus, it's even dropping it still down a minus one. If you walk, that's a minus two. All right. So it has a good chance of hitting its target with those weapon systems. And you put your typical clan mech pilot in this thing, which is usually a 3-4. You basically are having a mech that is doing a heck of a job of hitting its targets. And I always like the 55 ton class. So it, it does a good job. Now it is, like I said, a little weak on the long range fire department. Fire power department, uh, you know, does 10 out to 20. And that's not nothing to write home about. You know, this kind of puts it into the class as a flanker and an anti-scout mech. All right, so, and it's basically a, a garrison. They call this a garrison mech. So it's going to be doing its best to stop things from getting in uh, close to whatever target they're trying to get at. Now, with those uh, three pulse lasers and two streak twos, that's your 12 range bracket down to, you know, 1 to 12. So it has some capabilities. Now, the biggest thing you got to look at this mech and then obviously within three you got the machine gun so that's your anti-personnel weapon or just your if you're within three of the target and eh, just throw some plinking at it at in the general direction to see if you can do anything with it now uh which kind of makes it uh good as a anti infantry slash harassment type mech in that way and it does good if you got a, any type of vehicle coming in close you just go hammer away with those machine guns and you know you're looking for those motive hits now 
uh, when you look at the the heat category of this mech not bad uh, with 22 dissipation uh, I always like to look at it it's like if this mech does jump there's six heat so you subtract that off so you're looking at 16 well obviously if you're 20 to 13 hexes you have no problem with heat not at all so you just hammer away with that large pulse laser and you have plenty of extra heat to dissipate with it maybe in your direction now when you get into 12 here you got some options now if you're within that 8 to 12 range bracket which would be your large or long range bracket for your your pulse lasers and your streaks this is where you're going how do i balance this do i want to fire the uh three pulse lasers and the large pulse which would put you at 22 and then if you run that would put you up to on the heat scale if you jump obviously you're going to be cooking yourself not doing yourself any favors so you have to look at hey do i want what i want to do with that so and then you throw in the wild cards which are those streaks because they hit or don't hit so you just kind of look at it and go well let's just see here uh the pulse laser is probably going to be i've got large pulse i'm going to use that so that leaves you six left six to eight to play with if you're jumping now if you're running well obviously that leaves you 20 so that, that's hey that leaves you 10 to play with i would be more than willing to say hey all right i'm just give you three large three medium pulse lasers and the large pulse and just you know see what hits now when you're within let's say eight range bracket and you're starting to get into that medium range that's where you say do i want to fire the large pulse and just leave it up to the medium pulses the streaks and just see what hits you know if the streaks don't lock on well obviously you don't have to worry about heat too much you know but if they do eh, not a big deal so it, it's kind of a well-balanced one if you're walking and running with this mech it's a well-balanced heat uh mech if you're jumping well then it's still balanced balances well with just the shorter range weapon systems because you can fire all those and not worry about heating up either it's just that large pulse laser makes a big difference in the game how much heat are you willing to gamble with some people will just push the the heat scale up the uh, up the ladder and just say hey we're gonna go to almost blow up and then somebody hits them with an inferno and then they do blow up which i've done before for other uh, against other people and you know i like run if i'm running in a sphere i'm gonna see how many infernos i can toss on my mechs if possible just for the whole reason you blame against people that like to push the heat envelope but when it comes to heat this mech is fairly balanced it's just that one wild card of the large pulse laser that makes the big difference and you can work your way around that depending on the range back bracket you're playing in so how do i always use this mech and i've used it before is like i said it is a uh flanker or a it, it actually works really good in a city fight uh when you got a jump six you know getting in behind somebody or jumping over a building into another block works really good uh or hunting down any type of uh lighter mech so if you're going against inner sphere and they have their their scouts uh running around trying to get around your flanks uh this mech has no problem intercepting usually and getting in close enough because if you're a most time uh scout is trying to get to a certain point to get around the lines and all you have to do is just make sure you're putting yourself in between uh you and the potential target which may be your you know whatever objective so if you know they're going after a building or something like that typically scouts don't have that long range firepower they got to get into that medium or short range bracket and that's you know where you as a 
696 can get in there and put yourself in between them and maybe hit them with the large pulse. You hit a scout mech enough times with a large pulse laser, you're going to get into their juicy spots and cause havoc and start blowing things off. Or in a lot of cases, heck, a couple good hit, hits on a leg, their leg is gone, they're down, they're dead mech. You know, a light mech that has no leg is was zero modifier is dead. That's just a done dinner. So that's pretty much how I like using this thing. It is it's a very good mobility mech. Now, if I had a choice between the Ryokin or the uh, the Gauss Hawk, I probably would take the Ryokin every uh, day. But you know, depending on the scenario, uh, it makes a good mech. It does the job and there's nothing to complain about with it other than maybe some of the, the weapon loadout you know some things i would kind of like to chase but you know it's kind of one of those fixed mechs you know it's not like an omni where you can just turn around and say hey i want this loadout or i want that loadout etc speaking of loadouts let's just look at it there is a few different versions of this there is actually three there's the vapor eagle number two all right, this removes two medium pulse lasers, both streak pods, the large pulse laser, and one of the double heat sinks. All right, in exchange for a Ultra 10 cannon. Hmm, AC 10 Ultra. Over the shoulder mount. And it uh, carries enough ammunition to continue to fire it for a maximum for a minute and a half. So basically, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of ammo on board uh nothing to really complain about but uh let's see i think it's what two yeah two tons two tons of ammo with it uh, the, uh, we'll get the job done but i personally don't like that version because you're taking away a lot of firepower just to do the potential of doing 20 points of damage and you got a 50 you know about a 50 percent chance of actually doing 20 points of damage when all you have to do is get a little closer and you know you're actually going to do a lot more damage with the uh medium pulse lasers and that large late large pulse laser and well you got three chances of hitting with those three weapons versus the one chance of hitting and then you got to roll again and see if you get another hit you know and yeah, not so big a fan of that one. So it's one of those mechs where it's like, yeah, uh, you're. I, I really don't see gaining much from it versus you know running with the standard version. Then we got the Vapor Eagle number three. Uh, this one, Clan Steel Viper, uh, stripped the weapons out left everything else alone and this one carries a er a clan er ppc an atm3 with just a i think it's a ton of ammo and for the replace the machine guns with it and then it has uh uh what is that? three heavy medium lasers while a pair of srm2 launchers for still again so, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not a fan of heavy lasers. You know, I don't, I'm not, I've never been a fan of heavy lasers for what they bring to the table. Uh, I personally, I'd rather had, you know, it's like, I'd rather take an ER uh, medium laser over a heavy medium laser. You know, your bang for your buck type deal. And then ATM-3, it's like, you, you have a choice there. You got an ATM-3. So, yeah, it's like you get the, the ER PPC. I, not, I, I like the ER PPC. Uh, to me, it's like the standard version. That'd be a swap, you know, do a direct swap. You take an ER PPC versus a large pulse laser. That would have been something that you can possibly change out and increase the firepower at, you know, at the cost of uh, your pulse laser. But you still had the, the targeting computer with that. But with an ATM-3 of one ton of ammo, it's like, what are you going to do with that? 
other than either long range fire support or you know how you, I guess that's be pretty much what you're trying to turn this thing into possibly I'm not a really fan of the Eagle Vapor Eagle 3 either and we got the Vapor Eagle 4 uh, more radical design this uh, variant actually drops the target computer and jump jets hmm it mounts three ER small lasers and four ER medium laser and a pair of ATM-6s, four tons of ammo. Okay, so now you got some uh, options there with those, but you're going to run through that ammo pretty quickly. And then you have uh, high amounts of heat generated, it, so it has 17 double heat sinks. Yeah, well... So you have the options of the ATM sixes giving you some options at longer ranges. And then you have the four ER medium lasers and then your small ER small lasers. So hmm. But you don't have the target computer anymore. Yeah, personally, I would have looked at and say, yeah, hey, what can I do? How much how many tons would it take for that uh so you got f and four ER medium lasers. All right. And I don't necessarily think that it needs the 17 double heat sinks either because uh, I always l would look at it. It's like, okay, maybe look at what it would take, you know, if you drop the ER small lasers and kept the target computer. You know, because four ER smalls is only one ton of for the target computer anyway. So, you know, there's something to think about there. Because you can probably get to drop something. But, I'm, you're, I guess this is a long, could be a long to medium range type of fighter. And that's kind of the role I'm looking at, how this would be used. Because you're looking out at, at, you know, 15, the 15 range. And then with the ATMs, then, you know, you get some long range to medium to short range. So that's, you know, it, it does have some options there to play with. Uh, so there you go. That's, it can be used. I'm just not agreeing with the, the, the whole thing of getting rid of that target computer. That, you know, that's, to me, that's kind of an uh, built in design perk for this thing where you know say hey it's got a target computer yeah i'm a fan of target computers with for what it brings to the table for you know especially at long range gunnery but something to think about and uh, to be honest with you when it, you think about the the standard version i can work around some of the the slight design problems when it comes to the the vapor eagle for when it comes to you know the equipment loadout you know to be honest with you that with the machine guns how often would you be using machine guns you know would it have been better suited for maybe having some ecm yeah so things to think about but you know you're kind of stuck with it because it is a set piece design other than the the variants and a uh, imperfect world so that's pretty much it when it comes to the Gosshawk Vapor Eagle or Vapor Eagle Gosshawk, however you want to call it. Which side of the aisle you're on. Not a bad mech. You can work around some of the stuff. Hope you guys like this one. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. And we will see you in the next one. Hell Corrects out.